Hey friends, so there are thousands of plugins out there focused specifically for in-studio use, and unfortunately for us live musicians, many of them take loads of CPU and have crippling latency, making their use on stage or on streaming shows just not practical or possible. This is where one of my favorite plugins of all time comes in, Tornado by Sugarbytes. In this video, we're gonna explore why, if you're a live looper or a stage musician, you simply have to check out Tornado, all right? Let's do it. So I just put out a tune with my friend Lavender Fields called Wanero, and since I'm on the East Coast and she's on the West Coast, we decided to do a remote live performance of the tune. You can watch that up here if you want. The most current live setup I use for Earthcry, which is my solo music, has Sugar Bites Tornado all over it. In the performance video we did, I mainly used Tornado in an audio effect track for each stem, mangling and processing each stem separately. Let's check it out. So I guarantee it's going to change, but at the shooting of this video, this is the most present iteration of my Earthcry live set. I have my drums, my bass, my melodic instruments, and my sound effects or vocals, depending upon what the song has, as four stems in Ableton, right? And each one of these stems, as you can see, has a tornado in it and an audio effect track containing that tornado, okay? Now I've got one, two, three, four stem tracks. I also, on my master track, have an audio effect rack with Tornado in it for master audio controls. And here I have my trusty UC4, and <laughs> the way that I've got this set up is so awesome. This controller is unbelievable, y'all. Basically, if I hold shift and I click any one of these controls, all controls on this entire controller here are completely new. So, you know, scene one is these knobs, these sliders, this crossfader, and these buttons they're all different. And then if I hold shift and hit two, the entire thing's different, three, and so on. So what I've done is I've got it so that on track one, these sliders are controlling the drums, okay? So if we look at the drums, we'll check this out. We can see that's moving, that's moving, that's moving. So before I even open Tornado, I can show you what I'm talking about. Let's look at the drums track, and I'm just gonna launch this first scene here. <laughs> So as you can see, I'm just controlling these knobs here. Now, one more thing before we jump into Tornado, something that happened in Ableton 11 that is just so unbelievably useful is that you can create these macro variations. And the only variation that I have set up is this reset button. And what I've done is I've mapped one MIDI note on all of these channels to just reset all the controls. Okay, so for example, let's say I just totally screw everything up. <laughs> Do you see that? All I had to do was hit that one button, even though I screwed up all four of these tracks. Let's go ahead and just do it again so you can see visually. So I'm on my drum track, I'm gonna screw these knobs up. On my bass track, I'll screw these up. Now, I'll go on my master track and I'll do that too, because I even did this on the master. Now the master knobs are here, okay? So I've screwed up everything. But if I just hit reset once, all the controls, even though it's not reflected on the controller, everything is reset. And this is so important for live performance, right? You don't want to mangle your song unless you really meant to do that, right? So you can see every single track, I'm clicking on all the different tracks, they're all reset. Awesome. So let's go ahead and dive into the Tornado itself. Now, first of all, you'll notice that, yes, I do have an M1 Air, but it's an Air. It's not that powerful of a computer. At the end of the day, I've got one, two, three, for five instances of Tornado. Actually, I've got more than that. I've got Tornado on this effects loop for my Augustus looper, as well as the inline effects for the looper. Okay, so all told, I have eight instances of Tornado, actually. And you can see that this set is idling at 2% CPU. And when I have it running, hovering around 7%. So the first thing to say about Tornado is that it's incredible at CPU usage. Now the next thing I want to show you is that in Ableton Live, if you hover over the title bar of any effect, you can see down on the bottom left-hand corner, see where it says zero samples? What that's showing you is how much latency each one of your devices has, okay? So let's look at the master track, for example. Now I'm using Stutter Edit, which is yet another great effect processor that also creates no latency on its own. Tornado, as you can see, creates no latency. Now the only plugins in this entire set that I will let Ableton use is an instance of Inflator, 
okay, which is just a, it's just a hard clipper, and then Ableton Saturator on analog clip mode, and then a limiter. And as you can see, my limiter's look-ahead time is three milliseconds, so of course, it's going to have three milliseconds of, of latency, okay? So these are the only plugins in my entire set that I allow to have any latency. And this is a very negligible amount. The most that, that is in this entire set is this inflator. And the reason that I use this is because it distorts the signal, yes, but in a very, very clear, you can barely tell that it's happening. And the reason I have this here is that when I'm playing with a bunch of other producers, almost any other producer I play with on stage has like a negative uh, eight or negative six LUFS mix, and it's super loud. So I, in order for me to compete with that, to a certain degree, I can't be super quiet, so I ended up using this inflator with a saturator and a limiter, okay? So anyway, let's look at Tornado. So here's Tornado, and now Tornado looks sort of like a toy, right? You look at it and you're like, this thing, what is this all about? This, this is ridiculous. But I wanna show you the guts of this thing and why it is so unbelievably powerful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna solo the drums and we're gonna listen to this drum part and we're gonna take a look at what's happening. So what's going on is is I've got these eight knobs mapped to these eight controls here, right? And when you open Tornado up, you can actually just, when you click this little triangle here, you can control these controls by configuring them with Ableton. You configure a control in Ableton just by hitting configure and then moving a knob, right? So I've just configured the dry wet, right? That's all that is. Anyway, so I just need these, these controls configured. So the way that you use this is you can drag an effect onto a knob, right? So now we have a reverse delay on this first slider. Let's go ahead and listen to that. Right? That's what that did. So now you might be like, well, that's super basic. <laughs> like that's all you get to do? Actually not. This thing is so unfathomably deep. So let's go ahead and look at this granulizer, this second effect. If you hit edit, whoa. And so what we get is this back end that is just so powerful. So granulizer is one of the many effects that comes with Tornado, all right? So you can get out of this view by hitting the X, and you can see that all of these are different effect processors that you can put into these knobs, and you can edit them. And what essentially this is, is not only can you edit the effect itself, but you can edit how each knob interacts with the effect. So this happens to be knob two. And as you can see, as I move this knob, all these other sliders on these other knobs are moving, okay? You can see them moving. Now let's go ahead and mess with this a little bit. So I'm gonna play this. I love the granulizer effect. Basically what this is doing is it's taking little micro snippets of the audio into a buffer and then repeating them very quickly. So you get that classic granular stretchy kind of sound. Let's go ahead and look at how this works. So. The first of all, maybe the most obvious effect that we could use is the dry wet, right? So if we look under this knob, we can see this control right here. What this control is gonna do is it's gonna determine how much of an effect the macro knob, this big macro knob has over the parameter that we're looking at. And at this moment, we're looking at the dry wet. So if I turn this all the way up, what'll happen is that if I turn this control all the way up, we'll have just the wet signal. Check it out. So all the way up, we can hear we just have the the crazy wet signal, right? So of course, this is all just one control. This one knob is doing literally everything. So this one knob is sampling, right? It's changing the position of the grain. It's changing the grain size and it's changing the distance or essentially how long that sample is, right? And it's changing the pitch, okay? So let's just say I want the pitch to remain the same. I could turn the pitch to zero and make it so the knob doesn't change anything and set this control right here to the middle. Now, if I move this knob, you can see that it's not, it's barely moving at all. It's not gonna change the pitch. <laughs> That's pretty nonsensical. I'm going to turn this down to about halfway this dry wet so we can really hear what's going on. Real quick, I interrupt this granular wiggle because I want to take a second to tell you some exciting news. If you're a live looper or a stage musician using Ableton Live, I'm making a new online course specifically for you. 
I already have Ableton courses for mixing, sound design, and composition, but this will be the fourth horse of the Ableton apocalypse, completing what is the internet's most thorough learning environment for Ableton Live. Each course contains over 25 hours of video content just like this in a giant Discord community of like-minded musicians. So if you want to know when this new live performance and looping course comes out, you can sign up to be notified here and down in the description and comments. All right, let's get back to it. Now let's go ahead and look at a different effect. So let's look at the Shatter. So Shatter is one of their weird reverb programs. Okay, check, take a listen to this. Now you might be thinking, man, this reverb, <laughs> this reverb, it sounds kind of metallic. It doesn't sound that good. Kind of sounds like a crappy spring reverb. Yeah, you're right. I agree with you. And that's one of the things I want to talk to you about with Tornado. I could actually probably get away with loading 4,000 Tornadoes in the set and they would all still work. I don't know that for sure because I've never tried it, but I can definitely say that my computer has the resources to do so. Tornado is not really that great for making effects in the studio, right? It's not going to deliver the most incredible sound. But then again, how many reverbs that actually sound good could you really honestly get away with on stage? Probably not that many because you're going to run out of CPU resources. Tornado is not designed, okay, for sounding the best. It's designed for being able to react very, very quickly, right? This control is tight. It's like playing Super Smash Brothers. Like you want that control the moment you hit the button to throw a punch, right? In the same way, you can think of Tornado as that. It's got the most snappy feel to it, right? So let's go ahead and look at another knob. We'll look at this Slice Arranger. So in the Slice Arranger, this is kind of like a beat repeat, but what's fun about it is that it's got all these inbuilt patterns, okay? And again, we're just using one knob and it's knob seven, right? So take a listen to what it does. <laughs> so what's fun about this is that the slicer arranger will essentially, depending upon where my knob position is, not only am I saying, okay, go ahead and trigger a repeat, I'm also saying have these different patterns. And each one of these different patterns is going to repeat and beat repeat this, this drum pattern in a different way, okay? Now, it's very important, though, that it samples the drum beat on the clock, okay? And so that's where this key sync comes in. What this does is essentially it says, all right, for every quarter of a beat, I will wait until the next quarter of a beat to engage the effect. If I have this on zero, listen. See how it got off right there? Essentially what I'm trying to show you is that if I put it on quarter right now, it's gonna wait until a quarter of that beat is over to actually trigger the effect, making it so that the effect is always on time. Okay, so it sounds like this. So really, in a lot of ways, like just by moving this one knob, there are endless combinations of remix. So another reason that Tornado is so awesome is that when you're on stage, you need to set your controllers up and set yourself up for success. You can't be getting into the nitty gritty details in here when you're on stage, you gotta perform. So all I wanna know is that if I move this knob to a different location, it's gonna do something different. If I pull it all the way down, it's gonna bypass the effect. That's all I really need to know. And essentially, any one of the Tornadoes in this, in, in this whole set Essentially, all I need to do is make sure that these knobs are zeroed out, and that is my dry signal. That is the dry stem for the drums, okay? So again, now that you know all that you know, check it out. Right? So I can just get in here and just mangle my stuff up and I know that every time I return my controls all the way down, the dry signal is going back through. And if I ever don't know for sure, check it out. I just hit that one button and it resets, again, resets that audio effect rack. And because I have so much faith in this system, I can look at my master track and I even have a Tornado instance on my master. I've got a couple wacky things going on, like a low pass and a high pass. So I've got a couple things like this really fun modulation. Take a listen to this. <laughs> And what I do live is I just obsessively hit this reset button, right? I'm just constantly resetting. I'm like, oh, 
you know, just in case, because I mean, at the end of the day, I want to make sure that, you know, when, when I want this whole world, this tornado world to be bypassed, I know that just hitting that knob will do it. Even if I've left a couple controls in some weird place. Right? Now, looking at this comb filter effect, I just want to show you one more thing. You actually can use LFOs. Like, I don't, when I turn this knob, it's me that's controlling the comb filter, right? Listen. Right? But I don't need to do that. I actually could use some LFOs instead. So what you can do is you can see that there are all these modulation, there are all these colors right here. So this is orange, this is green, and this is blue. You can see that you can actually go plus or minus with any of these controls. So let's use LFO2 since it's on a sine wave and we'll make it change the cutoff of number one. So I'll make it go plus, And now you can see if I just turn this knob up, see how it's moving now? It's because now that it is mapped to this LFO. So let me slow the rate down a little bit and I'll turn this all the way down. And all I need to do is just turn this up and it'll do its own thing. But you can hear the cutoff on the right is not changing. So maybe what I'll do is I'll make it go negative. I'll go to negative on this one. <laughs> and now, this time, I'll make it go the opposite direction. And now you can see that whenever this one's up, that one's down. And so now we get... Okay, so this is only scratching the surface of Tornado and what Tornado is capable of doing. There is no way in hell that I have enough time in this one video to show you how deep Tornado gets. But I will say this, that it is the most featureful multi-effect processor for live use that exists. And at the moment, it happens to be on sale. It's on sale until January 2nd. So I highly recommend if you are a live musician using Ableton, or computer effects, or if you're using an iPad or even your iPhone, Tornado is available also as an iPhone app. Now, I am not paid by Sugarbytes. I just really love their dev team. Their dev team is incredible. They are always on it. They're always releasing updates. They're just a really, really great company, and I can't say enough good stuff about them. So I hope you enjoyed this. Go get yourself Tornado. If anything, it's just a lot of fun. There's so much pressure to make the most perfect mix all the time and the most perfect whatever, who cares? Sometimes it's just nice to have an effect processor that feels like you're playing musical video games. And that's what I feel like on stage. And that's one of the reasons I enjoy it so much. Anyway, if you enjoyed this, like, comment, subscribe, you know what to do. I'll see you next time, everybody. Thanks for watching.